Well, you did warn me. I got to say, you you and Dan did warn me. Um, oh, you got your second shot. I did. I got my second shot. And you guys were all like, oh, you better you take a day. You take yeah. a day. And I was like, I'll be fine. I'll be fine. And then I went and I got, I got the second shot. I got my, my second uh, shot of Moderna. And uh, that, that, second shot the that day I was like, what was, what's the big deal? I get the shot. I'm fine. I came back home. I streamed some more. I'm like, what is this? Every, everybody's weak. You're all weak. You're weaklings. And then Friday rolled around. I can't lift my arms. I could not lift my arms over my head. It was, I got, I got to say, that's kind of distressing on a lot of levels. It's like, yeah. um, I didn't get it as bad as Dan, but I did go into, oh, sorry, that was my flip flop falling off. I did go into uh, like a five hour coma the next day and had very vivid dreams that I had gotten up and done a bunch of stuff. I was I, very confused to learn that I had not. I I slept the next day. I, I slept a lot and then I was just, just straight. You know, I was I, I was all right eventually. And I will if you're going for your second Moderna and you haven't done it yet, um stock take the next day off. Well take the day off. What helped me was Dayquil. Dayquil having some time to sleep and Dayquil pretty much that covered all the because I, I was uh feverish, I was sore, I was I my eyes started watering uncontrollably hydrate. yeah hydrate that's that's always a good thing get some get some day um um pedialyte or gatorade or something like that but now i am i'm vaccinated uh two more weeks two i more. am officially good as of tomorrow oh yeah you already been had your two weeks i i have to percolate some more i i have to yeah. to ferment um, I have percolated. I, I have to, to. Tomorrow, I reach my final four. Yeah. And you know, you know what I'm gonna do once this thing is finally in effect. Nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I. I. I'm gonna continue to enjoy my life of not going out to see other people I as much as possible. Really, really try and get a job at a shelter, hmm. or a volunteer job at a shelter, because I miss it. Well. Like Sarah, Sarah has, has has just got one. But what? Yeah. Like, do you not have enough cats? No, I just miss the work. Like you know what it is. I had a rep at my old shelter that I loved all the asshole cats that everyone was afraid of, which is how I got a Simba and um, a Valkyrie. Yeah, but I also worked with a cat named Bacon who was epileptic and hated to be touched. And by the time I left, I could pet him. Um, so like, I liked all the hard cases and I miss that. And like, I have Houdini, um, but I just miss helping cats. All right. Fair enough. I just, I, you know, I don't want to go near people because they're terrible. I, I never, I, I gotta say the, the whole, everybody stay home and all the things get brought to you during the pandemic. I was, I was. I was like, my time has come, but <laughs> yeah. All right, let's. That's not the worst. I, I I hope to God they keep that whole um, where you can just order all your groceries online and go to the store, and then they'll, they'll wheel the cart out to you. You can load your Nine. up, and you're done. I want that. That needs to stay in my life. I feel like a lot of stores will keep that because people seem to have really liked it. A lot, yeah, because I don't like shopping. I hate it. Anyway, I've been blathering enough. Let's get the uh, the intro going. Each week, Catherine, the uh, Radio Daddy audience, go on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong With You? And um, I, I don't, what in the fuck? Fuck Canada. Oh Canada. That's that's not that's not in a good way. Um so you'll be surprised to learn that Canada actually does have unarmed forces. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm being an asshole. Um, well technically Canada is still under the Queen of England, but they don't like to talk about it. 
Well, can't blame them. I don't think they're gonna want. I, they probably don't want to talk about this either. Holy shit! This is actually a little scary. Canadian soldier charged with feeding cannabis cupcakes to artillery unit during live fire exercise. Oh dear. Yeah. That that doesn't seem like what the fuck. Canadian Army gunner is facing more than a dozen charges after she allegedly served cannabis laced cupcakes to her unsuspecting artillery unit during a live fire exercise. Court documents allege a sudden onset of paranoia, fatigue, and confusion among the troops who ate the cupcakes, unaware of their psychoactive content. See, that's one of those things. You've got to be careful with the edibles. There's, yeah. that, there's that joke. These edibles ate shit that all of a sudden, ah! Um, you, you, so with we, five rounds. That's, that's not safe. Paranoia, fatigue, and confusion with fucking mortar fire. Not, not great. Several effective me members were allegedly unable to properly execute safe weapons and explosive handling drills. Explosive handling drills! And even, even if you have the most chill experience possible after eating one of these you you're, be hand explosives. you're still sitting there like whoa this thing is so round hey is, like fingers anyway you shouldn't fucking oh my god bombs <laughs> This next paragraph is kind of amazing. This incident marks the first time that a Canadian Armed Forces member has been charged with administering marijuana to colleagues without their consent. Good. Good? I don't, know, last. I don't know why we had to mark that as a, as a milestone. It's called padding the word count. Bombardier Chelsea Cogswell is facing 18 charges. Um... According to court documents, Cogswell was working at the canteen during the exercise Common Gunner an intensive three week combat training scenario with the Royal Canadian Artillery School. Cogswell served the Army regular forces since June 2011, allegedly prepared the cupcakes and distributed them to colleagues in her artillery battery. But didn't tell them. Nope. All memories, all members of W, w Battery who consumed the cupcakes, except one. Allegedly experiencing symptoms which included dehydration, overheating, fatigue, confusion, dry mouth, and paranoia. Except one. There yeah. was literally a guy there like, these edibles ate shit. There was literally one dude. How do you figure out, like, <laughs> if she didn't own up to it, how do you figure out what's happened there? I don't I guess, know. Test? Probably, I guess they had to, or they tested the cupcakes later, or whatever was left of them, but just, yeah. Jesus Christ. If she didn't own up, like... Because I feel like if you're in the military and everybody suddenly fucked up, your go-to guess isn't going to be somebody gave them funny cupcakes. Like, military people are more paranoid than that. I'm just, I'm imagining that one guy in the battalion who wasn't fucked up just watching everybody else freak it out, like... Yeah. What's the matter, guys? Are y'all doing a bit? What the fuck? Um. So yeah, you're going to many jail. Such yeah. jail. So jail. Don't do that. They don't. They, yeah, when you fuck with the troops, they they don't take that. That's not like you know, <laughs> just playing. And like, no. And it's told me stories about the live fire drills. Yeah, that that that's and not. Don't shit happens when they're sober. You don't need them to be fucked up. Yes. Uh, well, next up, it's, it's oh, Minnesota. I haven't been to Minnesota in a while. Sometimes I think, you know, we should go visit Minnesota, and then, then we I've, get stories on our show. I've never been to Minnesota. This is not going to make you want to go. Um, naked woman nabbed after mini standoff. Cops suspect never stopped pleasuring self. Responding to multiple 911 calls about a naked woman walking around, jumping in and out of vehicles at a car dealership, 
Minnesota cops discovered a nude 35 year old suspect pleasuring herself while splayed across the floor of a pickup truck. Police dispatchers last Sunday were told that the naked woman was sitting alone inside a Pontiac SUV and she looked happy and did not appear to be hurt, appeared to be possibly under the influence. When cops, arri when cops arrived on the scene in Mankato, uh, I think I'm saying that right, Mankato, um, 80 miles from Minneapolis, Officers spotted a Chevrolet Silverado with its rear driver's side door open. They noticed feet sticking out of the door. Upon approaching the SUV, the patrolman spotted Jennifer Dort Weber, 35, lying across the floor of the second row. The naked Weber was on her back, feet in the air, digitally penetrating herself. That is, that is a very clinical way of saying that. Cop said Weber uh, was making nonsensical comments. And said she thought she was in St. Petersburg, Florida. Well, you know, she's... I mean, that is Florida behavior. That's right. Yeah, I mean, you know. Um, ask what brought her to the area. Weber replied, quote, to please the boys. Weber continued to masturbate as she spoke with officers. Over the next hour, police who had summoned an EMS crew tried to coax Weber out of the SUV. <laughs> Throughout the time... Weber continued to make nonsensical statements and continued to masturbate. Finally, after prolonged negotiations, Weber ex exited the SUV was taken into custody. Not Ma to be that because I know YouTube will be angry at me for saying this, but uh -huh. um, they wouldn't bother negotiating with anybody. <laughs> Like, if this was a different type of person, let's say, they would go straight to wrestling them to the ground. Ma'am, ma'am, put down the clitoris. Ma'am. would not be doing hours of negotiation. <laughs> but also, that's not what test driving a car means. <laughs> no, but that's a new euphemism. That <laughs> test drive the Silverado. That's a, that's, a, that's a new euphemism we can use now. <laughs> Also, like, look, if you need new car smell to get off, oh, they smell that in a spray. They smell. Oh. Like, just... personally, new car smell makes me sick. I don't understand people who like it. It literally makes me physically ill. But if you can't climax without it, <laughs> you can buy it in a spray. I just, I'm, I'm trying to picture the cops going, what, what if, what do we fucking do now? How, how, I mean, there's one dude like they're like she can't keep this up forever and all the other was like we yeah and there's someone just back there with a with a with a stopwatch <laughs> like Madonna in a league of their own <laughs> shut up shut up shut up I'm trying to concentrate <laughs> I mean at least because we're in a global pancetta they already probably have a sanitizing protocol. <laughs> <laughs> That's that's one of those. I noticed they don't name the dealership, which is one of because they don't want to have to be the, the publicly admit is that, that. Not what mini means because it's a weird spelling of mini. Oh, is Minneapolis? Yeah. Oh, I was trying to figure out what the heck that meant. Yes. Yeah, that's not the kind of publicity that dealership wants. They're like, you know what? You don't want people showing up on site going, is this the car or is this, is this the one? Their next ad's going to be like, shopping here is a real pleasure. Oh, no. That's... No. They're going to burn that car. <laughs> it was like several cars, though. Yeah, she was just like, just like jacking off at every fucking car on the lot. Just saying, Ugh. this is shit only white ladies get to walk away from. Uh, well, we got yet another one of these. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the the, the uh, stimulus or, or relief effort schemes that people came up with. It's like we had this unprecedented, and that, even though it was still pitiful compared to what, what we actually needed, but we had this unprecedented stimulus put into the economy that we hadn't seen since like shit like the fucking great depression and what did people do they fucking tried to to scam the shit out of it how can i fuck over people 
Except the problem is the, these are these are criminals who in any other circumstance could not accomplish a crime because it was too difficult. This was finally the first chance they had to accomplish a crime because it was just there. It was candy from a baby. <laughs> and they still fucked it up. Eight New York City men ran two million dollar COVID unemployment fraud scheme and some posed with the stolen cash. Online crooks were smart enough to gain the unemployment compensation system for two million in cash and some of them were dumb enough to pose with their ill-gotten loot on social media. Eight New York City men ran the nearly year-long $2 million fraud by applying for unemployment cash in the names of people whose identities they'd stolen. Uh, suspects Brian Abrams, Carlo Vasquez, Angel Cabrera, Armani Mill. There's a, there's a list. I'm not going to go through them all. Um, got $600 weekly payments. Yeah. Got $600 weekly payments in the names of hundreds of people. Four of the suspects then posed with their Benjamins in online photos, which the feds attributed to the media. The eight fraudsters. Now, at least some of those people actually were unemployed and needed that money and didn't yep. get it. Nope. Cash was either directly deposited in the bank accounts, sent as, sent as checks to their, their homes, or issued in debit cards made out to the names of the victims whose identities they'd stolen. Six of the eight men were arrested in the federal sting Tuesday. All six were released on $75,000 bond. Because we know you have it. Yeah. Every you know, fellas, after they pulled off the big airline heist and De Niro had such a hard time getting the guys not to spend money on stupid shit. And they if were all mean, like, what? What did I do? What did, what did I do? Today, it wouldn't be like, I bought my wife a fur coat. He'd be like, why are you posting pictures of the pot of the bags of money on Instagram? Why the fuck you posted on Instagram? Why the fuck? Yeah. Why the fuck? I, I can't. Like, I know again. you want to look like you want to look awesome with your big pile of money. That's like th th these. I. We always think of criminals as those people like, all right, we're going to lay low. We're not going to do this. We're going to take the money. We're going to transfer it to this. You know, we're going to move it through this. We're going to clean it. We're going to get laundry service. Blah, blah, blah. And no, it's just like, I'm on the fucking gram with like, dollar, dollar bill. No. No. That's, that's how they, because. Like, crime procedural television, of which there is too much. Yeah. Really yeah. makes criminals out to be a lot smarter than they are. Right? Because <laughs> we we all think we, we watch shit like Law and Order and shit where all like the cops are have to yeah. be like they have to be like little they're, they're they're like masterminds and cracking down on these these criminal geniuses and they have to find all these little tiny clues and they break them in the interrogate. No, nah, these motherfuckers just put the shit on Instagram. Like and Stabler would just spend 43 minutes of every 45 minute episode shaking their heads and cursing under their breath. Like, I... What a fucking idiot. Dunk, dunk. End of episode. What a fucking idiot. Stabler, he posted on 4chan again. Dong, dong. <laughs> that should be a show. Law and order, fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Law and Order, fucking idiots. That's us. <laughs> oh. That's us. Well, it's been running almost as long. We have, yeah. <laughs> oh, next up. Oh, Jesus Christ. I remember, like, it was a few weeks ago. Um, the airlines had said, like, this year had been the worst for unruly passengers ever. And they were cracking down even harder than ever. Like, they're, they're not tolerating any of your bullshit. Yeah. And this was some old bullshit. I, I don't know what the... Are the kids all right? Unruly passenger on American Airlines flight diverted to Seattle faces federal charge. Like, oh no, what did she do? According to court documents, 26-year-old Waka Suzuki allegedly became angry over a faulty seat charger, which escalated the point where the woman shoved crew members on the flight and then pounded on the cockpit door. 
girl. According to the charging documents, uh, Suzuki asked a flight attendant to help her charge her phone, but became hostile when the phone did not charge. She reportedly began yelling at the crew on the flight. Prosecutor says she ran toward the front of the plane after becoming unhappy with the crew's attempt, additional attempts to help her. The woman reportedly shoved crew members and stomped on their feet, running toward the cockpit. When Suzuki got to the door, she pounded on it and yelled for help to charge her phone. They're busy. But those guys in the little locked room at the front, they're fucking busy. They have a rather important job. It's called keeping the plane from careening into the ocean. The reinforced lot. There are some there are a lot of red lines on on, yeah. on in all this. But the biggest one is don't touch the cockpit door. They don't like that. Even though they, the shit happened 20 years ago. There are really nervous. They don't like it. It's it kind of traumatized an entire fucking industry. Yeah. You don't go near the cockpit door. You don't look at the cockpit door. You don't even think about the cockpit door. The cockpit no. door is not for you. Over. And who, like, who goes on a long flight without knowing to bring your own charger at this point? Well, okay, what happened was she brought her charger. I, I'm assuming it's one of those that um, it was either a USB you plugged in or it was a... Uh, one that plugs into an inverter. They have like a, a regular socket you plug into. Yeah. And her seat just wasn't working. Fair enough. I mean, like we travel with chargers and a portable battery just in case of that. I've got a portable battery too. Um, But as much as it would suck to be in the middle of a flight and one of my gizmos goes out. Yes. Um, You can just take a nap. Can take a nap. Um, they have radio. They have. They have. You could just be like, "Excuse me, ma'am, my charger's not working. Could you maybe give me some?" Like Most of them have movies. Like you could, the in front of you, you can watch any fucking movie you want. You could have definitely. Asked, my charger's not working, and scams like complimentary headphones and maybe a pay per view right. out of that. Yeah. You'd be like, oh, I'm sorry. We'll help you. You could if you if you we you could wheedle the shit out of this situation. Maybe you, you can might even get like a fucking glass of wine out of it too if you're play if you play your cards right. If you're polite, but not stomping on feet and charging down the fucking. How did you not? You were going to all the jail. Every jail. I don't understand these people who are so willing to destroy everyone else's day over the slightest inconvenience. And their own. This is like completely out of your own self interest because you're fucked. You've just fucked yourself. You fucked yourself hard and fast and long, and there's going to be chafing. When we as a species became so fucking self-absorbed that we don't give a fuck about anybody else. But like, no, divert the plane. My charger's not working. Like, what is that? Honestly, what was the expected outcome here? Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. Land! Her charge. Her charger's not working. You know what? The captain will let you sit in the cockpit where they have an outlet. You want to fly the plane? What what fucking planet are you fucking from? Christ. Like, I've literally, I've had my phone, my phone died. And I just, it wasn't the best, but I'm like, fuck it. I listened to the in-flight radio. They have like radio stations on there. I was like, okay. And nowadays on longer flights, you can almost always, there's a little TV in the back of the seat in front yep. of you. There's a fucking hundred movies on it. It's got they're video not, games on that motherfucker. Yeah, they're not always the best movies. There are free yeah. movies on that thing. Yeah. Like, you know, you have something First to keep... Our brave was on a flight to Ireland. You can shut your brain down some way or I another. I watched Abraham Lincoln Vampire Hunter, but then my sister was like, your seven-year-old nephew's sitting next to you. And I was like, oh, well, I guess we're watching Brave. Well, he's got to learn history sometime. <laughs> Brave is a good movie. I didn't mind, but... All right. Next up, speaking of not thinking out the consequences, this motherfucker is so goddamn lucky to be the fuck alive right now. Holy shit. Fleeing man climbs on wires... 
causes North Portland power outage. Look at this motherfucker up here. I'm going to let the video play. Mm. A man who Portland police say tried to escape custody put a school on lockdown and caused a power outage to 3,000 customers. Happened in North Farragut and Wabash, just north of Lombard. Power cut company shut down the power until the man came down around 3 p.m. was taken into custody. Look at this crazy some bitch. I get nervous when birds do that. Well, the 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 way birds get away with that shit is if they're only touching one wire, they're fine. This guy, let, let, we'll just look again. Not one wire. That's he's sort of. Why don't you lick that third wire just for good measure? Jesus Christ! No on it a little. Like if you're in the, you're attempting to flee from the authorities. The power lines are not your friend. The Portlandia reboot got dark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> they won't come up here. Yeah, you know why? Because you shouldn't either. Yeah, you're, they, they're not coming up there because they're waiting to scrape you off the pavement. Yeah. If Look, if, if you're doing something and your pursuers are not in a hurry to stop you, Think you about think why about that is. Yeah. It's probably a reason for that. <laughs> Arkle says turd on a wire. Oh. But no, th because of this motherfucker, w instead of just letting him fry himself, which admittedly was probably, probably be bad, they shut the power off to 3,000 people because they couldn't isolate that exact, that exact wire that he was on. They're just like, just be like, shut it down. It's objectively the better decision because it's the middle of the day it's spring nobody's going to freeze to death like people will be inconvenienced but chances are that's it three roses says when will people learn that electric wires are for tossing tied together shoes on <laughs> why do do you people... hmm. i don't know if people know why those are there why in cities it's um I think it's people that have died by gang violence. The families do that. And some little fucking asshole did a TikTok of like him going around. He put on like a workman uniform, went around with a ladder, took down all the shoes and sold them. And was bragging about how much money he made. <laughs> and uh, people didn't like that. So he was like, it's just garbage. No. At least in cities that, I, if I recall correctly, that's usually what it is. Sometimes it's also probably just kids having throwing, fun. Throwing shoes up. Why would people throw? I, I, okay. All right. So, but. Yeah, climbing out on the fucking. I, you couldn't pay me. Look, if it was, if there was a fucking beast from hell in pursuit of me and my only escape was the fucking power lines, I'd be have to be like, give me a second. here. <laughs> How fast is it going to eat me? Yeah, it's just because I got to do the math on which one's going to hurt more. <laughs> Electrocution is like is getting arrested really worse than frying to death. I don't I, I say this to a bunch of people who I how many of you have actually been electrocuted before? All right, you've been electrocuted. I've been electrocuted. There's there are actually people who have never been electrocuted. They don't understand what electricity is. I, I I work on electronics and I've done it to myself because I'm a fucking idiot. Unplug the shit I when you're working on it. I fell with a faulty lamp when I was a kid, and I temporarily burned off some of my fingerprints. <laughs> Like, I remember my dad was piggybacking me down the stairs because I couldn't touch anything. And I was looking at my hands and my fingertips were all black. Always have a story. Somehow. It's like you were, it's like you were made to do this shit, Tara. I know. It's like, it's like I was built for this. Our last one tonight I is... falling in this life. Um, our last one tonight... This 
This is this is the most bless your heart uh, mugshot I've I we, we, I've seen in a while. How did this happen to you, sir? Did you do this to yourself? Uh, let's just start with the mugshot and and go from there. Whoa! The, 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 what the fuck? I think someone, the person who said who sent this to me, said it looked like he was attacked by a wild hairdresser. Um, I mean, the guy from the Prodigy had that, <laughs> and I don't think that is. It's it, it, it does not look intentional, does it? No. And yet, it's centered. Well, here's the story that goes with it, because holy, yeah. holy. I'm mother. intrigued as to why there's an excavator next to him. Man steals excavator, tries to hit officers with the bucket. One man is under arrest after, uh, get the video up here because we got video, of course. Um, one man is under arrest after a Madeira police say he stole an excavator from a construction site and attempted to strike officers with the attached bucket. According to police, 33-year-old Hugo Barrera was driving the excavator westbound on Avenue 14 when officers arrived. Barrera refused to leave the vehicle and attempted to fend off officers with the excavator bucket. Officers were eventually able to get the cabin open and Barrera surrounded. He was later booked into Madera County Jail. It's, Why did he steal the excavator? That's, we'll never know. It's not like, you know. Like, I, did he just really need to dig a koi <laughs> pond in his yard today? <laughs> it's it's did not he like. Did up the patch of hair that got shaved off? <laughs> it's not like, you know, it's not like Iron Man. You can't just climb into it and fend off an army. It's an no. excavator. Yeah, it, it's, it only does so many things. It's not a mecha, all right? It's not a goddamn Gundam. And they don't go that fast either. No, they, they aren't made to go fast. They, they, there's no competitive uh, excavator. Well, you know why I say that? There probably you is competitive. Probably is. Yeah, someone probably does now excavator. You said that in YouTube, somebody's going to be like, actually... I yep. compete in the competitive excavator state championships. How dare you? When Bob the Builder breaks back. <laughs> <laughs> Just how do you go? You're already having a bad enough. No, fuck the police. You're already having a bad enough day when this is your goddamn haircut. All right. And it's not like you're going to be hard to pick out of a lineup. Oh. <laughs> You, you kind of did this to. I know the story there. I know, right? What happened there? I, my, I'm leaning toward made girlfriend angry. Because that, that's what that little landing strip on his head says to me. Yeah. But then wouldn't you finish the job before you left the house that day? I would. No, not if she just get, came after him with the clippers and just, and just let, him, let him go like that. All right, but wouldn't your first stop be at the barber to have the rest of it? Like, before you just went out running errands, I would. It's, it's, it's hypnotic. I, I am incredibly neurotic about my hair, so I would be unable to function. But, yeah, it is, that is not, a, that is not a war vehicle. No. The excavator. It's not, not a going, getaway car either. It's not a getaway car. It's, it's, it's kind of pathetic. All in all, it can dig a hole. That's the extent of its skills. It's you're, not. You're doing the Zamboni scene from Deadpool, except <laughs> you don't know you're being funny. <laughs> oh my god, poor, just poor dude. I, I'm sorry. I. It, He's having a tough day. I, I'm trying to figure out in any universe that haircut was on purpose. Yeah, I don't know. Because like I said, it's not even centered. You know, like you can like the the strip that's a little bit longer than the rest for whatever reason, like the double yellow line in the road on his head should be lined up with his nose, and it's not. There are times when I've been shaving and I've goofed up, and I'm like, the clippers have gone like through my beard, and I'm like, well, let's even this shit out, and it looks terrible, but at least it looks symmetrical. 
this this is terrible and asymmetrical so you're 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 just and i don't know why that's the part that's most upsetting to me but it is it's not the aesthetic is what's killing you yeah yeah well i don't know if you know this but gen z and the millennials are currently in like a cold war over what type of jeans you should be wearing and where you should part your hair um millennials are hardcore side part gen z is hardcore center part so this guy's pissing off both of them yeah i know Millennials, there, there's a certain subset of millennials that are really, really put out that teenagers don't think they're cool. And I'm like, look, I'm 40 fucking four. I know I'm not cool anymore. It's fine. I've accepted it. I'm going to wear my skinny jeans, though. <laughs> well, I guess the first the, the first thing we've learned tonight is... uh. Maybe uh, get 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 your hair sorted before you do crime. Maybe he was in the middle of shaving his hair when some idiot climbed on the electric line. <laughs> <laughs> that's it's theory, Omega. That's the next thing we've learned. If the cops suddenly stop chasing you, ask yourself why. Yeah, they're not giving you a head start. Let's put it that yeah. way. Pretty much anybody. Like if Jason Voorhees stops chasing you, ask yourself. Um, we've learned that if, god damn it, stop fucking around on fucking play. They are really touchy about that cockpit door. Yeah. If you don't they know why. Do anything they want to you. If you don't know why, if you, if you, if you don't understand what that whole nine slash one one means, Google it. You, you'll, it, it'll all come together for you. I'm sure. Do you realize how many people watch this show that we're not alive when that happened shut up stop it Ugh. um we've learned that criminals are idiots yeah it's not well, lied to us th this whole lex luther shit godfather shit no 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 that ain't real they're just fucking morons Criminal Minds, CSI, they all fucking lied. Um, we've learned, don't involve everyone else in your masturbation. That's a good rule in many, in many way, ways, however you want to say it. Don't involve other people in your masturbation. Don't Unless, force them into your kink. Yes. You know, if, if you know, people want to be involved, that's cool. Don't just get the crowd does not need to be there. Mm -mm. Hey, don't hiss at her. Yeah. Valkyrie is our little normal. And she just runs up and wants to play with the other cats, but we haven't got a bell on her yet. So she can sneak up on them and they <laughs> do not like it. No, oh, it when you have to give yourself a jump start, you, you don't need to. <laughs> Just deal. Um, and finally, we've learned that Canada has a military and they're high as balls. Don't, don't. Yeah. That's another do not involve people without their permission. Drugs. It's, it's, that's, that's consent all the way around. It's bad etiquette. Also, you could blow up Canada. I'm not sure most of us would notice. Uh, Ryan Reynolds would notice. <sighs> uh, all right. Well, that that was the horrible shit for this week. Thank you, Tara. Good night, everybody. Good night. We'll see you next week. But we're not done.